Hey guys, welcome to episode 179 of the Cat Lady po uh, channel. Cat Lady <laughs> channel. I'm Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's 2TCATT, which stands for Craft All the Things. It is September 20... <clears throat> 27th, 27th, it's Tuesday. I am recording from... I'm coming to you from Michigan. Uh, it is cold and rainy the last couple days. I am a mom of two kids, a uh, wife of a wonderful husband, and cat mom to formerly two cats, one cat now, so my poor Devo was thinking about him again today. Um, I am a fiber, <laughs> I am all out of it today, am I, aren't I? Anyways, I'm a fiber related channel, so yarn related things, uh, but also do all sorts of other crafty things. I really need to pull out my Cricut, I say that a lot, but it's kind of hard because I have to like pull it out and pull all the stuff out so it's not like just ready to go so it sometimes it's like I have to have like a whole lineup of projects or something to make it worthwhile but anyways <laughs> I go off on a lot of tangents uh thank you for joining me if you're new thank you please go back and check some other episodes out just to see what you're getting into uh I record snippets throughout the week and then post them on Fridays so and just kind of show you what I've been up to with knitting, spinning, crochet, and all sorts of things. Halloween is coming up, so I will be working on some silly Halloween projects for the kids and pretty much just for the kids because uh, as far as my Halloween costume, I'm going to do the Comic-Con character I did, which was Eraserhead uh, from My Hero Academia, something Aizawa, Professor Aizawa, I don't know. I can't remember his name, um, but he is a... Uh, teacher at the Hero Academy for my Hero Academia uh, and it's a fun costume so it's just a really really simple costume but we tried to we were going to dress up for Comic-Con last May and we all got sick so we did not but we had Comic-Con at home so we made the best of it but David's going to be Boy With Uke who is a musical artist at the moment that he really likes so it's pretty much just a blue hoodie some pants a ukulele and but I gotta make him some sort of mask so Boy with Uke wears a LED mask with glowing eyes, so I need to figure out how to make some kind of black mask with just little, I bought some blue, it's hard to tell, some pictures it looks like they're white, sometimes it looks like they're blue, but I bought the blue twinkle lights, so hopefully it's fine, I don't think David will care, um, so I gotta work on that, I'm hopefully gonna run up to Joanne's today actually to buy some supplies for that. And then he wants to dress all his kitties up, if you are a long time viewer you are very aware of David's kitties. He wants to dress them up so I was gonna buy some like felt to and I have to look to see what I got to to make some kitty costumes so that's that anyways on to the normal show uh, last week I talked about my knitted knockers and I totally was stupid uh, I will show you what I was working on where was it so I said I was going to do like a fun back with a normal neutral front color so the normal neutral colors I've been doing is so you've seen these ones so I have two knitted knit knockers and two crochet knockers that you saw last week so I was working on a another one that I was going to do like fun color in the back in the back and normal color in the front well I for totally forgot while I was working on it I'm working from the back to the front so I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to change color soon and realized, oh, that's the front. So this, no, I'm not going to change colors because I'm just going to make it neutral. So I made it all the champagne color and that used up almost all the rest of the yarn. This is Patton's Grace in like champagne. I have a little snippet left. I'm wondering if I can try to make one multicolored one. So now I have like an odd number because I'm out of, I can't make a full one in this color. I don't think it matters. I mean, I have some pairs they will use some singles as well but then I so then I decided because I was gonna do pink in the back so I just made a pair of the pink band these just work up so fast I did both of these in like within a day and a half so these are the pink ones these are size C C cups I made all C cups except for this pair is B cup in the crochet or C so I have one two three four five six seven seven knockers this is all for I'm going to donate them to the Knitted Knockers organization, which I think I can find, I'm trying to find a local place I can either drop them off or send them to a hospital, whatever, so I don't have to mail them all the way to Washington or wherever it is, because that's kind of silly, since they can be used here. Um, but I'm working on that. 
but this is for the Reluctant Knitter, Reluctant Sisters podcast. Uh, save the Tatas Make Along 2022. So she is doing a giveaway. I'm really hoping I win because I really want to win her prize. Um, but you get double bit entries for the knockers. So I keep spamming her with my uh, knocker posts. Uh, I had intentions of casting on another one. I have not yet. So I will probably maybe work on that today. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going to piano lessons today with David. So that will be a perfect, it's such a perfect travel project. So tangent again we went out of town last weekend so spoiler not spoiler but super secret I I actually uploaded my last podcast on Thursday forgot to post it on Friday and then posted it on Saturday so like technically I don't like tell people hey hey we're out of town so we went up north for the weekend and we left on Thursday night we came back Sunday it was an interesting experience we stayed at a campground but in a cabin we were supposed to go in August but uh a Devo had died and then my grandmother was sick that week that the week we were supposed to go my grandmother was very sick and actually ended up passing away that Saturday that we would have came home so it was very good that we didn't go because of course I got to go to the hospital and see her and we and my, my dad was supposed to come with us and you know he obviously it would have been bad if he was gone too so it was good that we didn't go so we rescheduled it for now the weather was not great but we were in a cabin so it was heated but we got in at like nine o'clock at night. We got into the cabin. So here's a PSA for you. Uh, if you're staying at a Airbnb, whatever, VRBO, or any sort of unit that you are not familiar with, you should bring your own carbon monoxide detector. Not guaranteed it's gonna have one at the place. And hopefully, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're required to have smoke detectors. I don't know, you, maybe you should have one of those too. But we walked into the first cabin that it was nine o'clock. We just got keys and the office was closed. So we walked in and we turned on the wall unit heater and it smelled really bad. And then like literally like 20 seconds later, the smoke alarm went off. <laughs> so like, okay, well we're not, and of course we had already like brought all our stuff in. Like, okay, we're bringing the stuff back out because we are not staying in this cabin. So I had to call the after hours line. The guy's like, um, oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> Let me call the manager. <laughs> so we waited in the car for about five minutes and then he showed up and opened another cabin for us. And we walked into that cabin and we're all like paranoid now because like, okay, what, what is this place? Uh, it had a better heating unit. It was like more of a centralized, you know, the heat came out of the vents and the floor, not just this wall unit thing. So we turned on the heat, it smelled like, you know, you get that weird heat smell, but you know, it was okay. It didn't smell like smoke. Uh, there was a smoke detector didn't go off but then we looked for a carbon monoxide detector and there was one on the counter and it said please replace by June 2016. Jim's like I'm going to the store and getting a carbon monoxide detector just because we were all paranoid and freaked out so he went to the he went to Meyer and got a new carbon monoxide detector that we, we kept so we're gonna take that when we travel you know it's a good idea. Um, You've heard stories of families just dying in random Airbnbs, which it's not common, of course, but, you know, it was like a $20 whatever thing. Not even, probably, I don't even know, but it was w worth it. So we have our carbon monoxide detector to take with us uh, on our trips. But yeah, so it was off to a rocky start. But we went and saw some lighthouses and there was a playground David enjoyed, so he loved playing in the playground. And we just needed some downtime, chill time. So Emily got a couple days off across country. And so we just, it was nice. So we went, um, we had some good food. I went to a brewery that I really liked, Jolly Pumpkin Brewery. So we had some really good beer. Um, so overall, we had a good time. But we came home Sunday and then Jill <laughs> played video games and back at it now. So I worked on the my knitted knockers on the way up and at the cabin and that was that was pretty much it uh in other projects i didn't i haven't spun in a while but i haven't showed you what i was working on i feel like this one's really long and it's a little boring because it's one color so i feel like it's not holding my interest as much which is bad but so that's what i got so i haven't got any new ones so, so also another tangent story i'm like freaking out on Thursday getting ready to go and I cannot find my G crochet hook and I have lost this hook before and I looked everywhere everywhere except for my spinning bag because why would it be in my spinning bag while well, I was making those stupid granny squares did I use a G I must have used a G and lo and behold I found it on Saturday or Sunday 
this like in my bag in my spinning because i did bring this with me too but i of course you know how many projects did i bring with me like three three or four how many did i touch just the one so typical uh so that's that i've not touched my sweater so i think i know what i'm gonna do so i last i talked about my vote it was all split and then i had a whole bunch of people randomly message me oh if you why don't you do this one why don't you do this one so we're still relatively split because it's like okay you should just do the stockinette and then this person says oh you should do the ribbing I'm gonna do the ribbing because Googling it and looking it up, I looked at samples and whatever, it's very vintage and I like, I like that idea. I like the idea of making like a vintage top. And so like that look with the chunk of ribbing is technically like a vintage styled top. So I'm like, okay, I'm all for that. So something different, something unique, something that's not in my normal repertoire of sweaters or anything. So it's gonna be like a vintage, short sleeve, form fitting, ribbed bottom, done. Two by two, that's what I'm gonna do. If I don't like it, I can rip it out. I'm actually gonna put a lifeline in so I'll put a lifeline in before I start the ribbing, do the ribbing. Got to remember to go down a needle size. I did not go down a needle size on the ribbing on my arm. Um, I didn't finish the other arm yet. I'm not going to go down because I want it to match. Uh, worst case, once it's done, worst case scenario, I can rip it out and go down a needle size, but hopefully I don't need to. But I will go down a needle size on that because I just, I just, I wanted to make sure it's snug because that's the point of the sweater. But I don't want it to be like poofy up top either, so... I think it'll be okay because I think it's it's very form fitting. So, but again, I will put a lifeline in. So whatever I do, I can change it easily. <clears throat> I'm fine with ripping things out without a lifeline, but it certainly is easier when you have one. <laughs> so that's the plan for that. So maybe I'll work on that this week. Uh, in other news, so I need to make a hat for David. So. Oh, speaking of what I'm wearing, I am wearing the Barley Light. This is my go-to hat. I have like four of these hats in different colors and I want to keep making more in different colors because I feel like I want a rainbow of barley lights. I don't know what it is. It's just it's a it's better than just a stockinette like sock head because it's got this garter stitch panel in it. It's hard to see probably. I don't know if you, you probably can't see it. This is Mint Rain Yarn Hot Mess Express. I just love the name of it so and I love this bright pink so I love a rainbow of these hats but uh, I made a hat for Emily that's similar it's very pink um, she wore it this weekend because we all needed hats and then I had bought this yarn from Parker Knits in Parker Avenue Knits in Detroit with the purpose of making so Emily picked out her yarn oh uh, yeah here it is so Emily picked out her yarn for her hat and it's the Manus de Uruguay Allegra Allegria so this was Emily's hat color and then David picked out this one. So now I, it was like springtime and by the time I finished Emily's hat, she couldn't even wear it because it was like too hot. And so I'm like, I'm not even gonna make David's yet because it's not, he can't wear it. So I asked him again if he wanted a hat. Worst case scenario, I'll wear it. So I'll make it, I'll make it the same size. So this is Mangalar colorway. Uh, and this, I'm going to make this for David. Another barley light, same with Emily. I will. Uh, accumulate all the barley lights if they never wear them so it's fine but then I asked Jim I said would you wear a hipster beanie hat and he's like sure so I said maybe what color like I said maybe like olive green he likes kind of um, the olive green colors he's like yeah and I said okay I'll dye some yarn for you to make your hat so that's what I did yesterday so this will be available in the shop because I made a whole batch of it uh, so once I get it photographed and listed by Friday it should be in the shop so by the time you see this check out the shop. I will, I, I actually, I will make it, uh, I make a point after this episode airs, I will list it in the shop. That'll give me time to get everything together. Also, I'm going to work on getting all the dyed the order back up, uh, the solid colors. Anyways, introducing Olive Juice, aka I Love You. So that's kind of a joke that Jim had made with me, well, like when we first met. So when you say, if you mouth the word it kind of looks like I love you. <laughs> so this is called Olive Juice, AKA I love you, <laughs> considering it's for my husband. So I'm gonna let him pick which skein he likes because some of them are lighter. So we have, this one has a little more lighter tones in it. Uh, this one has a little more of the brown tones in it. You know, this one's got some more darker chunks in it. So, but I really like how this turned out. So if you are interested in Olive Juice, It'll be available soon at thecatlady.com. So, and I'm going to make a barley light. So bar, mo, all the barley lights 
so that is on the plan. So I'm gonna yarn, uh, wind this today. I gotta let Jim pick which skein he likes best, and then I'll wind his. And oh, falling all over the place. And they make they work up pretty fast. So we'll see if I can get them done. Maybe one a week. I don't know if I can do more than one a week, but uh, maybe I'll actually probably start this today at piano. So. That's it. Uh, oh, that's not it. So, it, <laughs> other things I've acquired. Uh, I won a pattern, which is super exciting. I feel like I've won a lot of things lately. Uh, I'm on a winning streak. Come on, save the Tata's mail. I want to make. I want to win that one. <laughs> it's a really nice bag from Amy. Happy little yarn and some really pretty yarn. So I really want to win it. Um. Anyways, uh, I won a pattern and it is a crochet pattern. I'm not going to talk. I'll talk about this too. Uh, a crochet top. It's got. It's all like a granny pattern. It, it's reversible, so front or back is the same. But it, one side is like all granny knit, crocheted, granny square kind of, not square, but granny stripes. And then the other side is like three skull so motifs. And I'll put a picture of it in here and I'll put the designer because I don't remember her name. Um, so that, I won that. So I totally want to make that because that looks so cool. Hopefully I can do it. It looks a little tricky with the skull motif, but she's got a lot of pictures in the pattern. So I won that pattern. And then I just bought today, because it was on sale, the Telly Bean Knits uh, Secret Skein. One skein, huge cowl. So it's kind of like my Stormy Sky, where it's like a very loose knit gauge and drop stitches. Um, so it's like one skein made this like really big project. And I have so many one skeiners that need things. So that's like perfect. So I need to find a good one skein to make that because I oh this one's really pretty. It's like let's see. It's a single ply, which actually would probably be good for a shawl. Ooh, this may oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. This might be a good one. This is the uh pinata pop I got in Ludington Mad Madeline Tosh. So I don't know, that would might be pretty. I got so many, I got so many one skeins that would be really nice. <laughs> So I should go, I need to go through my yarn again and see if I can like match things up to coordinate some and then really pull out the ones that can't be coordinated so that I know those are one skeins or I need to find matching skeins. Um, and then I need to maybe even pull some out for prizes. I don't know. All of them were like special though, you know, it's like I bought all these one skeins at festivals and they were kind of special, so I don't know. Uh, anyways, so that's it for today. I will be back later this week with uh, updates. Oh, and what I'm wearing, this is my crochet top. This is a the sunny, it's like sunny day. If I remember, I'll link it down below. If not, it's on Ravelry. Uh, it is with Karen Simply Soft, super simple. It's got uh, the drunken granny is what it's called. It's super cute. I love how this turned out and it's uh. Obviously, since it's fall, I have the long sleeves. You have to wear something under it because you don't see through, but it looks really cute with the long sleeves. I like the little ruffles. So I am all in the hand makes today. So that is all I got. I've rambled way too long. So I will be back this, uh, later this week with some updates. Hey guys, it's Wednesday here with a little update. Boy, it is so gloomy and kind of chilly out, which uh, is fun for wearing my sweaters, but it's, boy, I feel like I'm crooked. Uh, going days without sun just like really saps the energy. It's just like I want to go lay down and take a nap, but I cannot do that. I have plenty of things that need to be done. So I had my piano lesson today. Boy, I always do so bad at my lesson. Now, I didn't practice a ton because we were out of town, but like I have total performance anxiety. So it's like, oh, I can play this song at home pretty good. And then I get to her and I'm just like, it's a disaster. So that's what happened today, but it's fine. Anyways, so I've been a little busy in the crafting genre, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I've been busy yesterday. I did some uh, extra things, but I cast, I mentioned I was going to cast on a hat for David, which I did. So this is the Barley Light by Tin Can Knits. I uh, got a decent amount done for just starting yesterday. This is in Manos de Uruguay yarn that I got from Parker Avenue Knits in Detroit. If you were in Detroit area, go visit her shop. It's very nice. 
And yeah, so that's so basically it's a stockinet hat with this garter stitch section that you really can't see on. It's, it blends right in there. That you, really, eh, you can kind of see it, but I do like how this is coming out. And actually, it does look like it's kind of going to like zigzag kind of or like swirl the colors, but who knows? It's hard to tell where it's going to go. And it's scrunched up on these little needles. So, uh, but I'm going to be working on that for David and then as soon as I finish David's I will start Jim's. He did pick out the yarn. What did I do? Oh, is this it? No. So he picked out his skein of yarn, the olive juice color that I talked about yesterday. So that is the one he picked. He looked at the bin. He's like they all look the same. Which I guess is a compliment so they all turned out similar but I, I can tell the differences. Oh and there it goes. So I pulled that aside. So the rest will be listed Friday on the website catlady.com. And then this morning I whipped out the last, probably the last for a bit, uh, knitted knocker. So I still have more of this yarn, so I don't know, I might make more, but now I have other things I'm worrying about. And the knit along is coming to an end. The reluctant knitter make along, it goes until September 30th. So what is today? That would be Friday. Yeah, so it goes until Friday. So you still have a chance to enter to win a prize from Adrian, the reluctant knitter. But this one, Got a little nipple on that. <laughs> so I started the back and was going, like I had mentioned before, I wanted to make a, you know, party in the back, neutral in the front while well, I ran out of yarn. So now it's got a nipple in the front. <laughs> Which actually, I think it looks kind of cute. So I don't mind it. Uh, I think this, I don't know, it's kind of like it. So this is another size C. I don't know what I did with all my boobs. <laughs> Oh, they're in, they're in that bin over there. So so now I got to get these to where they need to go. So, uh, but I will be done. I, I don't know. I really liked it. I do. If I don't know. I like this, this knitted, the bottom up knitting, knitted pattern is like my favorite now. Like I thought, I thought crochet would be the way to go, but this is totally the way to go if you're a knitter. So uh, if you are ever looking to do knitted dockers, this was just a, such an easy pattern, easy to memorize, easy to travel. And I do like the patterns, Grace. They do have a list of approved yarns when you're doing them for donations, so I, I would suggest checking it out if you're looking for some easy donation projects, because, I don't know, and it's fun to kind of, this was kind of fun to make it like a little more creative, but most of them are obviously neutral, so. Oh, and that, my hat is living in my pumpkin bag, so I'm starting to pull out my seasonal bag, so I made that bag, it was from like a, I don't know if it was a fat quarter or just a scrap, I think it might have been a scrap from the scrap bin at Joanne's. Uh, and a little zipper top, so I like this bag. So that's a perfect bag. I didn't, I haven't touched my spinning, but I have thought about my spinning project. So I mentioned, so we talked about door hangings, we talked about wall pennants. Uh, someone mentioned a pillow, like a pillow, couch pillow or something. So I think, I don't, I meant to look at, when I went to Joanne's, I meant to look at the pillow form sizes. I don't know what sizes they have, but what if I did so I have different options. Like I could do, I could do squares, but I don't think I want to do squares. I could do granny stripe, but then again, you still have like the holes in it. So then I'd have to, I'd have the white pillow showing through. So I'd either have to put some sort of liner on there or just deal with the white, which I, I don't know if I like that. So then I thought, well, what if I just like double crochet, like a full panel and just keep going with the minis until I make like a, I don't know, 12 inch panel whatever size a uh, pillow. And if I got two pillows, they could go on my couch downstairs. So I could make two like throw pillows. I don't know how far the minis will take me. I don't know. I don't know. So that could be fun. And I could either do a front, no, if I have, if it's ends up being like, I have a way too much yarn, it could be a front and back, full size pillow, the whole thing around. Or it could be two fronts. And then the back could be fabric that is removable. I feel like it should be removable. So if you do the, if you do like two, two rectangles of fabric overlapping so that you have like the center to pull it out. So what are your thoughts? That could be kind of cute. So that is what I'm leaning towards, but so I think I'm going to pull these out because I don't think I'm going to use these. Uh, so I'm leaning towards that. And, but I, I mean, I'm in no hurry. I got so many other projects going on right now that 
it's really like let's I'll just keep spinning what I got and kind of go from there so that's all I got for today Emily's at a cross-country meet this afternoon and then she has robotics so I need to figure out what she's gonna have for dinner and I need to get up to the school at in time and find a place to park and blah 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 so typical day <laughs> around here um and that's all I got so I will oh what I'm wearing so I've been trying to wear my hand knits more because it's the season now to wear them so this is the and I've never worn this out in public uh this is the retro granny square top I believe by Star Lily Creations. I will put that down below. So I had my yesterday's top, which was the, also the crochet top, uh, the sum, sunny summer crochet top. I need, everything's on Ravelry too. And this is the Star Lily top. So I made this for Yellow Springs last year, but it was so hot that I ended up making a tank top, granny square top. So now finally it's cold enough to wear this because it's warm. It's all acrylic. It's all Lion brand. It was all scraps. 90% of it, if not all of it. I don't know why I had so much green, but it's scraps from my Doctor Who scarf. So like the burgundy and the yellow and the orange, I believe were all, doc I think these were all Doctor Who scarf, scarf scraps. Maybe not the green though. I had a lot of green, I don't know why. But I love it. It's very retro colored. It looks like, you know, 70s couch. So it's really cute. It's cropped, but I have like high-waisted jeans on. I have a tank top and sports bra on. So I don't know, I just think it looks cute off the shoulders. So that's that. Uh, I am I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing any self care lately here. Uh, I've been wearing hats and stuff, but whatever. I, I'm due for a haircut, so I need to actually call the salon soon and get that scheduled. So done rambling. I will check back in at least one more time this week before we wrap it up. Just working on the same old stuff. So I will see you next time. Hey guys, it is Thursday and I think this might be the last clip of the week. We'll see. Got a kind of busy weekend ahead, so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get to it tomorrow. So I'm going to try to wrap it up today and we'll still post it tomorrow as usual, but this will be, this will be it. This is the weekly wrap up. So what have I been doing the past day? Oh, did I record yesterday? I don't even remember now. Uh, yeah, I did record yesterday, so losing track of time. This week has gone by very fast, which is kind of, I don't know if it's good or bad, but, <clears throat> um, but I was, uh, hunkered down on my barley light for David and where did I leave off? Oh yeah. So when you last saw it, I was all the way down here, this little marker and yeah, I cranked all that out and look at that cool spirally kind of pattern it's making. I'm pretty excited about that. This is the front with the, yeah, yeah, oh gosh. So when I look at it up close, I didn't, I didn't see it at first, but yeah, you can see the spirally in the garter stitch too. And you can see the garter panel a little better now because it's a lot bigger. So I am on target to just keep plugging along on this. And I'm currently wearing the hot pink, hot mess express barley light. So I made this one a little bit, so the, the, you know, wool is forgiving as far as like blocking and stuff. So I made the child size in this, which is literally only four stitches shorter than the small medium. This is small, me the, the sizes are like baby, blah, 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 child, small, medium, and then large. And they're only a couple stitches apart usually. So this was only four stitches apart. So I mean, I can still fit this over my head. So I like to make things for the kids that will last a long time. So technically, at this, at this point, the things I make can potentially last forever when it comes to like, I guess not, for, not forever, so, but for a while, so. Because um, when I make Jim his hat, it's gonna be the extra large or the large version. So, because this one, he can fit this on his head, but not this one, the orange one. Well, boy, I'm not even remember now. I think I did maybe, did I size down to a child size before? I feel like I made different sizes, or maybe I maybe I started with a large for me. Because I remember going down a size, because I thought, looking at the schematics of the head shape, I think I fit into the large category, but but it was like kind of loose, because I mean, it, there's just so much stretch in this. So anyways, that's that. So in other news, I think I had mentioned that I need to start work on kids 
Halloween costumes. Mm -hmm. David's Halloween costume. So I'm going as, yeah, I'm sticking with my My Hero Academy costume. So is Jim. Emily's on the fence. She needs to go to the store and look at costumes. But David wants to be Boy with Uke. Got a little fuzzy. I will put in a picture of what Boy with Uke looks like. So basically he wears this mask with like these LED eyes. So I work today and it's, it's a definitely homemade costume look. It's not like, you know, He's gonna love it though, and I think I did pretty good, but we have this. Uh, so that's what it's gonna be. So I still gotta figure out a way for it to, it's pretty much just gonna strap, strap across his face, so I'm gonna put, uh, sorry, blocking my mouth. Uh, it's just gonna strap across his face somehow with vel like probably elastic and Velcro, and then I need to figure out where, like so, probably gonna have to like sit on his shoulder. He's gonna have a hoodie on. Hopefully it's not like a million degrees. So yeah, I'm, we'll have to figure out where to put the battery. It's a little heavy, so I mean, it's gonna have to sit somewhere. It's not gonna fit, it's not gonna fit in his pocket and then you'll have a wire hanging out, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe I can like tape it to the inside of the sleeve or inside of the hood, something. So that's gonna come later and of course the straps. But it took me a while to get all those little lights in there. So this is literally just a set of fairy lights. <clears throat> that I bent the wires and shoved them through little holes to make the circle, circle shapes. And I think I did a pretty good job making circles. I mean, again, it's not perfect, but you'll know who he is if you know Boy With You, so, and if you see the picture. Now, th some pictures I find that the lights are white, some are blue, but whatever, just went with the blue because I like the blue. So that's it. So that's all I've been working on. Um, I, da 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 Going to finish the hat, got to cast on the next hat, got to take pictures of the olive juice yarn and post that. I did put up all the dye to order yarn, so all the solid colors are back up on the website. So if you are looking for any multicolor projects, here's a sample here of all the main colors. I still have a project I want to make with these, but uh, this collection is also available. It's a rainbow collection, so you can get one of every color in a mini set. One, two, three, four, four, there's six of them there. Not in order at the moment, but uh, this is available as a set. And then each color has its own gradient set. And then you can order any color from the whole gradient, every shade, every color in a full skein. So if you want a full skein of orange. So if you're making like a multicolored project, so say you're making a shawl and you want it to be like orange, red, and yellow, you can order one, one yellow, one red, one orange and make your own kind of shawl kit and any base that I have. So I have 80-20 BFL nylon, 80-20 merino nylon, 100% merino DK, uh, 17 micron merino, which is super soft, two ply, and then a, is that it? I think that's all I have. I think I just have the four. The DK, the Marie, 17 micron, the BFL, and the uh, 80 20 merino. So, my bases are going to have to change soon, probably because I think I'm going to have to change suppliers. But for now, I have ample stock to dye. So, if you're interested in any solid colors, they are all up on the website. And again, each one has a gradient. This is like the, this is like the middle one, I think, because then there's a darker one and then there's a much lighter one. So, I think I want to say these are all the middle colors. So, and my plan was to make, oh, and here's a full skein of, of the black, which is a coal. I think I'm calling it, I know I'm calling it coal now, I think. Come on out. So my, coal, my this is a coal black color. And my plan was to mix, put these all together in the, it's like a round every corner shawl or something by Stephanie Lotvin, Telly Bean knit, Knits. I had that on the agenda for a long time, but of course there's a million other things I want to make. So <laughs> that is all ready to go at some point. So that's it. That's all I got. Uh, again, it's going to be a little bit, oh, vlog, Vlogtober is coming up. I'm still on the fence. I think I'm going to do it, but I'm probably, I'm not good at recording, or I'm not good at posting and putting things together on the weekends because the weekends are usually busy. So if I do record snippets for the weekend, I'll post it on Monday because that'll be the third by then. So technically, if I'm going to do a Vlogtober, it won't post until October 3rd and it'll be the October 1st, 2nd montage. But I don't know yet. Everyone voted when I did the poll that I should do both, but thing, and I did it last year, and we were the, just as busy last year. But I just don't feel like I got a lot of content 
So I don't know. But if I do vlog over, there is not going to be a regular podcast because that seems silly because I'm going to just be showing what I'm doing every day. So if you have any opinions on that, please chime in because I will be able to read them before I post anything. So if you prefer just I keep with the weekly podcasts instead of the daily updates, I still will do Vlogmas because I do have things to open. I have my, I'm ordering, I ordered the Pretty Twisted Yarns Advent. I'm doing an Advent exchange with some friends. I was going to order a third and a third Advent, but I don't know. I still haven't touched the ones from last year. I was pretty good like the year before I had like knitted or I, I think I crocheted my 12 days and I made the habitation throw with the other one I did with the other Advent. So I'd use them, but now I have mine and another one. Felicity Yarn Studios, which I wanted to get hers again this year too. But I don't need it all. I, I don't need any more yarn. So I think I will stick with, I have Pretty Twisted, which is new to me, you know, at Advent. I've never had her Advent. Uh, and then a bonus scrappy Advent from a friend. So that will be two, but I will open them daily. Um, I maybe should start working on my scrappy blanket again. That's up there on my shelf because I haven't touched that in like two years. So maybe I'll put together my own advent as well. So that'll be the three and I can add it to my blanket. I still have ugh, kind of so many minis everywhere. So, so yeah, I'm convincing myself I don't need another advent. So, but for December, I will have things to like actively do every day and then I'll do the lottery exchange with my friend. So that'll be a thing. So it's like October. Um, it's debatable. So we'll see. Anyways, and all opinions wanted. So <laughs> thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a great weekend and I will see you next week and I hope you get to craft all things.